Welcome back to the shop, folks. In today's episode, I'm going to give you a walkthrough of the condition of the peach and some of the stuff I need to address as we go through the peach project. Let's get started. This is Peach. She's a 1978 VW bus ASI Riviera conversion. ASI was a company up in Oregon that did conversions for VW of America. Um, since Westphalia was producing so few vans that were converted, um, but everybody wanted one of those vans, of course, because um, they're awesome. Um, so the Riviera, the thing that distinguishes them uh, primarily is this penthouse pop top um, that goes straight up. Um, pretty great little pop top. The nice thing about it is you get a whole lot more room inside. I'll show you that in just a little bit. Stock fuel injected engine. Um, it's got some problems. It leaks oil. Um, and the other problem is that somebody big certed the number three cylinder um, and that blew out recently. Um, hard enough to disconnect the spark plug wire. Um, I re big certed it and it blew out again which means the head's got to be changed. Um, but why change the head when you could rebuild the whole engine uh, as long as you got it out? Um, so I'm going to do that and switch it over to a mega squirt system as well. Um, this was a Washington bus. She's now a California or was a California bus for a little while after that. Um, and the previous owners installed this nice catalytic converter um, for passing California admissions. And um, there you go. I'm gonna turn her into a mega squirted uh, camper special uh, engine. The other problems with the engine is that the heater boxes are leaking, which causes exhaust fumes into the front of the cab, which is really not acceptable, obviously. Um, that's a relatively new development um, and part of the motivation as well, since the engine's gotta come out to do the heater boxes. I have installed this lovely blaze cut system. I highly recommend it for all VW bus owners. A um, couple hundred bucks, but uh, could save your engine body. So this is an automatic plastic flexible hose that when you have a fire, the hose melts and sprays uh, flame retardant all over the top of the engine. Um, may not save the engine depending on how long the fire has been running, but for sure could save your body. Um, so highly recommend it. Over here you can see I have got a Sunsaver 10 controller. I'm going to replace that with a Renology 40 watt controller, but I, I needed something quick and I had that. Um, and I put on a 160 watt panel to run the aux battery, which is over here. And uh, that's the main battery. I did put in a battery doctor, 12 volt electric isolator. Um, and there's a nice fuse separating those two um, over here. So there you go. There's the, there's the engine basically. Um, pretty stock setup. Um, and, and definitely gonna keep a whole lot of these parts. The main parts that are going are the fuel measuring system. Um, and well, uh, probably I'll do ignition as well, but I haven't decided on that front. Anyway, uh, let's give you a little bit of a tour. She's got lots of lovely stickers from where she's been. Um, I'm sad to lose those, but she needs a lot of body work. Uh, so I'm a painter, so those are gonna have to go. Boo hoo. Um, over here we got the right tail light. The right tail light's busted on the side, cracked on the side, and it looks like somebody backed into something right here. Um, and this looks slightly dented in here, so I'm gonna have to pull that a bit. There's some rust under here. Of course, the, the back bumper is all bent it up. Um, I'll probably replace that um, with a new bumper. Uh, sort of not cracked tail light lens over here, but these are aftermarket lenses. They're not original VW lenses. You can see they actually are not street legal here in, Cal in, in the US because they don't have the DOT marks. Um, and over here, we're missing the side marker light. So that's a problem. There's some signs of, of repair over here and some holes down here. The battery trays on this one are basically shot. So that's gonna have to be redone. Some, uh, some rusting here. She has been repainted once, but they, they didn't do such a good job on prep. Um, and so that paint's coming off um, and they like they didn't mask off this and didn't take that piece off and as you can see all the weather strippings all cracked it's sort of what you expect for this age of vehicle here at the rain gutter there's a whole lot of rust spots along the rain gutter um, so those have got to get dealt with I think those are bad in part because it was a Washington bus and in part because the seal on the pop top is missing 
So I don't think it was sealing properly to the body. Um, whole lot of rust at this drainage hole, essentially, because this is where all the water from the, the top comes in. So we're gonna have to think about how to improve drainage here a bit. Um, they did seem to drill a hole over here. And there's one other hole that's drilled like that back here, which I think they were using to affix an awning or something, but um, I'm gonna do a different awning. So, so that's gonna go different. Well, there's a whole lot of rust here along the sill. Um, that's not the greatest, but we'll, we'll deal with that as well. And some rust along the edge of the body here, as you can see, some not so nice paint job. A um, whole lot of rust down along the bottom of the door. So that's a problem. Jack points have some rust, but not too bad. Some limited damage on the jack point. The dog leg, bottom of the dog leg has some problems. Door, as you can see the door doesn't quite, the, the line on the door is not quite right. That's a, kind of a bit of a problem. And the bottom edge of the door is a problem. Again, cracked side marker lens, more rust down at this corner, some rust down here. Signs of repair here, because I think this bus was in a front end accident. Um, signs of, of repair here. We're gonna, when we get into it, we'll see how bad all this is. But I think that this post right here is not quite where it's supposed to be and that's causing the door to be slightly off. And I'll show you as well, like this is not, you can see the line there is not straight. Um, inside, down here, you can see there's a bunch of rust and other problems under here. The other side, the driver's side's even worse. Um, so that's okay. There's the taped up heater boxes. Um, the Rivieras would have had an optional table here and they've removed the mount for that table, maybe because they lost the table. Um, I did find a repro of that. Um, and they had a cup holder and had taken out the, the ashtray to hold that, have that cup holder there. I don't like the cup holder. I like running with a shift extender. Um, and, and, and just so I don't have to take my back so far off. So I put on a shift extender and a nice V-Dub logo leather knob. Um, and I replaced, I found a da, uh, an ashtray and replaced the ashtray. Um, they also did a kind of crappy job some previous owner on cutting out this this slot for a proper size radio a standard size radio because they only cut the bottom instead of cutting just a little bit at the top and the bottom like you probably should and so that's gonna have to get fixed up because the surround for that radio won't go on um, headliners not in good shape I think somebody stuck a sticker there and then that rotted and and dissolved the headliner here so she's gonna get a new headliner um, excuse me. Um, of course, you know, rubbers are cracked and not in good shape. Um, uh, around the front, you get the typical rust spots a little bit under the, under the sill here. Um, this seal, if you look on the inside, I'll try to get a good shot of it. You can see that it's not seated correctly. I think that's again because of the front end accident. Again, cracked lights, um, no DOT markings on them. Uh, front bumper is only slightly bent, um, but I'm probably going to replace that anyway. They're going to do stainless steel on the front bumper. Some surface rust. I'll have to see how bad that is uh, once we once we start tearing into the bodywork. Um, on this side again, another broken side marker light. Bunch of rust down here. Um, sorry, about the fingers in the way. Bunch of rust down here at the corner. Bunch of rust on the dog leg. Coming up around, bunch of rust on the door. And signs here with the green paint that this was a green door originally and not an orange door and they just overpainted it after the front end accident. Um, signs of breakage over here on the, on the work and, and definitely some rust signs up under the pop top seal. So we're gonna take the pop top off and replace all the seals and resurface all the fiberglass um, there are some problems with the fiberglass, so there's a break in the fiberglass here that's got to get repaired. Um, that causes the seal, the, the, this pop top, when it comes down to sit out too far and catch on the outside of the rain seal down below. So that's got to get fixed. Um, surface rust on the skin. This is a real bad spot. Um, it's going to take quite a bit of work. Somebody decided to jack up 
these are not jack points here. Don't jack your bus by this. Use the jack point. Um, and they sprayed spray foam in here. I'm not sure what the purpose of that was other than to trap extra water behind between the metal and the spray foam and cause more rust. But anyway, there you go. What are you gonna do? Um, sort of here, you got uh, this part here definitely is all rusted through. That actually sprays water up, but it's not too bad apart from the step. This part's all pretty solid. Um, some surface rust under the mat um, and some cracking here. Not sure what that's all about. See it when we get the paint all off. Um, so there you go. Uh, seats out. I took the seat out. I'm gonna replace both seats um, with with different seats um, and put in swivels. I'm gonna take out these bulkheads here and put in swivels. I want a different inside layout. I know a lot of people like uh, like original, but like this bus is not really original since it was done by ASI anyway, and she's kind of in bad shape. And so you can see here, there's a, a misalignment here, almost a half a finger or so three quarters of a finger and the, the door doesn't align straight anymore it points down a little bit which is indicative of this front hinge being not in the right place knocked back maybe or they've set it a little bit back so that it clears this post which I think is is bent and it's gonna have to be uh, straightened. Not sure how we're gonna manage that yet. But anyway, uh, one nice thing is uh, some previous owner installed these nice screens with the sliders and she does have sliders and screens on both sides, which is really pretty awesome. Um, kind of love that feature. She does have the, the 110, 125 volt service outfit. She has a pressure regulator here for the inside faucet. Um, and she does have a, a, an old you know manual pump and a push button. 12 volt pump and this is actually the water outlet um, there's no gray water tank I would like a gray water tank because otherwise I gotta put a bucket out here and run a hose into the bucket for the for the gray water which is not my favorite um, over here you got the water inlet um, it's a little cracked and broken and coming off a little bit here you can see it's sticking out just a little bit um, so that's got to get dealt with at the bottom corner here Again, we got the rust and spray foam treatment here. Um, so that's gotta get dealt with. And we got a whole bunch of cancer over here um, and some surface cancer here. Again, missing light fixture, spray foam behind it. Um, and uh, let's see if I can get down there. You can see that they did some kind of repair on the battery tray on this side, but they don't seem to have used metal. They seem to have used something else and spray foam and paint. Um, not exactly sure what that was that they used, but there you go. All right, so let's take a tour of uh, Peach's interior. Um, she's pretty great. Really. There originally would have been a cabinet here. They would have had a fridge and a two burner stove up top. You can see the plumbing for the propane is still there. And this table, would have been on the outside of that cabinet for flipping up for prep here. Um, and she does still have the propane tank. I wouldn't trust pressure in this propane tank as it's 40 years old and it doesn't have modern safeties. Um, so there you go, probably gonna replace that um, in order to get propane service back in her. Um, although I may do an induction stovetop, but I probably want propane for a Propex heater. Um, so there was a, a cheapo fridge installed here when I got her. I took that out um, because it didn't really work anyway. It was a Peltier fridge that just sucked. Um, and, you know, there you go. But you can see the plumbing is still there. Um, you know, it does have the sink. Um, cabinetry is not in good shape. So you can see... Um, you know, there are problems with the cabinetry being taped up. Uh, the door doesn't stay closed. Ya -da 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 -da. And there's these side cabinets which make the bed narrower and they have these roll up doors that don't work very well. So I think this cabinet's gonna come out entirely. There would have been originally a shelf back here um, that went from that side to over here. They seem to have taken it out. That's where the, the storage for the 
The extra bunk shelf would have been, um, but there's nothing there. I think I'm going to put a cabinet back here and, and arrange a separate storage for the extra shelf. Um, and then this window is all covered up so you lose some sunlight. Not very well insulated, just a piece of plywood here. Um, Riviera, the, the AS, ASI didn't do very good conversions on the Riviera. They did a lot of uh, cheapo materials in comparison to those. Um, anyway, down here there's the, it's hard to see because there's not enough light, but there, there is a, um, a freshwater tank down there. I'll probably keep that. Um, and there is a, this is the panel, the back side of the panel for the 110 that comes in over here. There's a switch that used to be wired to control that fridge, um, but you know, that's all going to get replaced. New materials um, and new things. You can see that the lights are yellowed. So here on the canvas, you can see the canvas is ripped here. There are rips in the fabric or the, the mosquito netting in other places. Um, one of the nice things about the Riviera is you get a whole lot more pop space up top here. And there's a board that I have that comes out to here. That's uh, right out there if you can see it. Um, and a previous owner installed these, which are not stock with Riviera, but are kind of nice that keep that board from shifting forward. Um, although I would have installed them the other way because those pins make it hard to deal with a board. Um, and you can also see the tables out there. Um, and there's a table leg that would then mount into here. I'm debating on that. I don't know. We'll see when I get to cabinetry. And the Riviera had, has this, stock has this flip down sort of thing. Somebody put speakers in, but they're blown and the, the wiring for those was not very well done. Um, so that's all gonna get done. One of the bad things on the Riviera bed, let's see if I can get enough light in here to get it, um, is that there are these, the, the brackets for it um, sit here and here, which means it divides up the under bench space into some really small storage areas that are not very useful. Um, I think the Westy design of the bed where the mounts are on the side is, is a much better design. Um, and because of these side cabinets, you don't get a full width bed down here. Um, otherwise, it's, the, it's a full queen width if you go full queen. So I'll probably change it out for a full width bed. Um, I'm still debating on some of that in, interior stuff, but um, the, the Rivieras are known for having sort of lower quality materials. So you can see like a bunch of the, this has shrunk um, and is no longer there. This is, you know, presumably cracked at some point. The cabinetry has just not held up this, this filler mold here and it's just, you know, plywood underneath, um, you know, uh, a, a laminated plywood everywhere. Curtains are in not such great shape, you know, kind of tattered. Um, and back here, the back, back seal, hard to tell from out here, but come around. The back seal's been leaking on this window, and so the curtains are all uh, water stained back here from this. This seal is leaking somewhere, I don't know where. But uh, that's going to get done. So I'm going to redo all seals as well, um, everywhere, and, and there you go. So there's an introduction to Peach. Uh, now we're going to take the engine out. I'm going to drop the engine and tranny uh, for rebuilds for those uh, over this winter, and um, we'll go from there into the bodywork after. Thanks for watching. If you got this far, you either love your dubs or you know me. So I hope you enjoyed. I sure did, um, and we'll see you next time.